We have one final speaker this morning, and then I know that you need the opportunity to speak, which is obviously what's going to happen in, in the workshops. So it's uh, I now finally introduce George Galloway. Thank you. Your Excellencies, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, after the masterful address that we have just listened to, there is uh, neither the time, and more importantly, not the need to cover the ground that Victoria covered so magnificent. So I'll really only be able to make three points before uh, going to the workshop. We stood in memory for Nelson Mandela at the beginning of these proceedings, and we had a right to. Uh, but of course, others are standing also. And it would be remiss not to make the point about the parade of hypocrites who are swimming in fake grief and respect for Mandela, people who did their very best, not only to keep him behind bars for 27 years, not only to sustain the apartheid system against which he struggled and for which struggle he sacrificed so much, but who actually campaigned for him to be hanged. Like Victoria, though she's wearing much better, I have a long memory of those days. And I know all the conservative MPs in the House of Commons who spent so many days and weeks as guests of apartheid, telling us that sanctions against apartheid South Africa were unconscionable, and I was there saw her lips move when Mrs. Thatcher described Nelson Mandela as a terrorist. And who said, I saw her lips move, I heard her say it, that the ANC will never rule South Africa, and that anyone who thinks they will is living in cloud cuckoo land. Well, Mrs. Thatcher is gone. Mandela outlived her. And his legacy is, of course, of an entirely different order. But David Cameron, the Prime Minister of Britain, twice went to apartheid South Africa and was engaged professionally to campaign against sanctions on the apartheid state. So let's not forget that. Hugo Chavez, we stood for also. I remember very well the brief, mercifully brief period of coup d'etat in Venezuela when President Chavez was briefly overthrown. I remember the British Foreign Office Minister come to the dispatch box and denounce President Chavez as a demagogic dictator and how the world would be the better for the military's intervention and his overthrow. That Foreign Office Minister was not a Conservative. It was a Labour Foreign Office Minister. His name was Dennis McShane, who was on his way to prison as a thief and a con man. He has outlived Hugo Chavez, but no one will be in any doubt as to whose memory uh, will be greater. One of the many things that came back to me listening to Victoria, I was myself traveling and working in apartheid South Africa on behalf of the ANC when the apartheid state was invaded and occupying and seeking to destroy Angola. One of the many things that I remember as she drew the link with the occupied West Bank was Mandela's words 
that we can never truly be free as long as the Palestinians are not free. And I remember that in my time undercover in South Africa, every house I slept in, every car I drove in, every dinner I ate, every rand that was put into my pocket came from a Jewish member of the African National Congress. And I remember to say that Jews don't have to support apartheid. And thousands of Jewish members of the ANC sacrificed for the victory that Mandela went on to enjoy. And I remembered too that President Hugo Chavez was the only president in the entire world. And I don't exclude a single Arab country who gave Palestinian refugees in Venezuela a passport and citizenship and the right to be a free and normal citizen of the globe. And I wanted to make the point, though Victoria did so perfectly, so I shan't dwell on it, that it is of enormous significance, though you will never see it on the BBC, that when Mandela was released, all of these hypocrite governments in the world that had supported apartheid were pleading with him to come and visit them as the first state that he visited after his release. But he went directly to Cuba and stood with Fidel in Revolution Square in front of a million people and said, see how far we slaves have come. The contribution of Cuba to the liberation of Africa, I have visited those graves of these internationalist fighters from Cuba who fell on foreign soil, who left their blood in southern Africa and who did so entirely voluntarily. Three of those who mercifully returned are three members of the Miami Five, one of whom now released Gerardo Hernandez and Fernando Gonzalez are still now incarcerated unjustly in United States penitentiaries. Rene Gonzalez is now free, but three, all three of them, were amongst those internationalist fighters fighting for the liberation of Africa. And I'm going to argue in the workshop, we have a duty to free them from their unjust incarceration in the United States of America. And uh, Rene Gonzalez, by the way, is coming to the International Commission of Inquiry into the case of the Miami Five coming to London on the 7th and 8th of March. And every one of us has a duty to welcome him here and to continue to step up the campaign for their release. I only have time to make one last point, uh, but uh, sadly it's one that doesn't get made by many other people, certainly not in the building in which I have worked for the last 26 years. If, when studying imperialist questions, it is both vital to offer solidarity to the victims of imperialism where they are, it is surely incumbent upon us to remember that the main enemy is at home. It's not good enough just to oppose imperialism over there. You have to fight it here from which it is practiced. And we have a duty to the people of Latin America to do and say far more about the British occupation of what we call the Falkland Islands. This preposterous appendage of British colonialism, this Gilbert and Sullivan farce by which hard-pressed British taxpayers who shiver through 
another austerity winter are expending hundreds of millions of pounds defending 2,300 settlers sent to the South Atlantic to run up the Union Jack and of course the blood of many British service personnel was shed in that imperial project. I am advancing in Parliament and without a solution which can be supported by the vast majority of British people if only we engage in it. It's not a radical proposal. It's only the proposal that Mrs. Thatcher herself was negotiating before Galtieri's invasion of the islands. A shared sovereignty between Britain and Argentina. On the basis, you can sell this to your neighbours, on the basis that if we do not agree to share sovereignty now, then the day will come when Latin America will unite and it will be simply untenable for us to have any presence in the South Atlantic at all. Thank you very much for the invitation.